Now, as Android adoption has skyrocketed, uh, people have been taking these devices to work. And we've heard loud and clear from the enterprise that they need very specific features. Well, in Froyo, we introduced over 20 new features designed to meet the needs of enterprise. Let me touch on two of them. Number one, we've become Microsoft Exchange friendly. That means, yes, thank you. That means things like auto discovery, integration with the global address book, uh, the security policies that are available in Exchange can be enforced upon the device. Number two, we've added new APIs for device management. Um, so you can build software that does critically important things like remote wipe of the device if necessary. And there's many, many other things that we've added that you'll see uh, in the documentation. Let's talk about new services available for developers in the SDK. Now, one of the first services I want to talk about is the Application Data Backup API. Now, if you use Android and you've gone to another device, you know that Android will automatically back up your applications. In other words, you get a new device, you log in, and your applications come along with that. However, what Android has not done is backed up the data associated with those applications. So for example, uh, I have a particularly favorite application that helps me monitor my exercise and my weight. But when I move to a new Android device, the application moves, but all my personal data and history doesn't. Starting with Froyo, we'll provide an application data backup API that ISVs can take advantage of and move the data along with the application. We think that's a great uh, feature. In addition to that, we have a brand new uh, API, a cloud to device messaging API. Now let me be clear. This is not a push notification API designed to compensate for the lack of basic functionality like multitasking in the operating system, okay? <laughs> We've done something very clever I think you're going to love. As a developer, you can send a message to our servers, which will do very smart things, like collapse similar messages. Our servers, which will optimize for the latency of mobile networks and make sure that that message gets down to the device. But that's only the first step. We've done deep integration with Android, such that when you send a message, that message can trigger an Android intent. Let me show you how powerful this is. Let's go to a demo. Now, what Matt has on the screen here on his laptop is Google Maps. He's in Google Maps, and he's using the Chrome browser, and he's added a Chrome extension. The Chrome extension is in the upper right-hand corner, and that sends it to his phone. So in the map, he's got directions. He's got directions from the Moscone Center to Google headquarters, and he wants to send that to the phone. What do you think happens? Do you think we send a text message that says this is the address? Do you think we send an email? No, we send an Android intent. In other words, when he says send a phone, the message gets sent to our server, gets pushed down to the device, the device kicks into navigation mode automatically. Keep your eye, when he clicks on send a phone, keep your eye on the Android device. So send it to phone, and on the Android device, boom, right into navigation. How hot is that? That's how you do a device, cloud to device API. Um, <laughs> let me show you another example. You're reading an article on the desktop. You think it's awesome, but you're out of time and you need to run. You want to keep reading that on the Android phone. Why don't you send that to the device, Matt? To the device. Opens up the browser, takes you right to that article, not ever having to press any other keys. Isn't that great? We can't wait to see what you're going to go do uh, with this API. All right, let's go back to slides. You're going to love this. I mean, come on. If you're like me, you have a plethora of devices you carry around with you. And that, all those devices shouldn't mean added complexity in yet another bill, right? You should be able to, at the platform level, enable tethering. <clears throat> and so now your Android device can, in fact, become a portable hotspot 
and really serve the needs of these other devices that you might have with you. Uh, in fact, let's show you a demo of this working. Matt has uh, a, a Nexus One running Froyo. He'll go right into tethering and portable hotspot. He'll enable the hotspot. He'll give it a name. In fact, I think he's already named this as Android uh, AP. And that hotspot will turn on. We'll give it a second there. There we go. Tethering hotspot is now active. Now he'll go to another device that doesn't have connectivity. How about that, that iPad? <laughs> and there you go. One bill. Isn't that beautiful? All right, let's go back to slides. Now it turns out, do you know what the most popular thing people do with these smartphones? What do, you, what do you think it is? Fairly obvious. It's they actually use the phone. The number two thing they do is they do text messaging. And the third most used application is the browser. And so it's critically important for us to make the Android browser rock. And we're going to constantly improve that browser. And Froyo is a major step in that direction. What have we done in Froyo? Well, I think you're going to love this. We have a 2 to 3x performance in the browser. How? Well, we, take this, we took the same JavaScript interpreter that we had in Chrome that made Chrome so fast, V8, and we brought that into Froyo. Now, the best way to show you how much of an advance we've made is to do a demo. So let's go and show you this. Uh, uh, fantastic performance boost. Now, we're going to do this demo with a number of devices. We're going to do Three it. Devices. We're going to do this demo. <laughs> Three devices. We're going to do this demo with Froyo, a Claire, and an iPad. Now, here's the demo we're going to do. There's an industry standard test. In fact, there's, tw there's a suite of 26 tests, the Sun Spider tests, uh, that really exercise JavaScript performance of all kinds. And when Matt presses start across these three devices, we're going to exercise each one of these 26 tests. As we complete one test, that little Android robot will take one breaststroke forward. And as all 26 tests are complete, we're going to complete an entire lap. OK? So how are we going to go do here? Let's go ahead and start this test. Let's see what happens. Oh, you started the iPad first, trying to give it a little bit of a lead here, huh? <laughs> You can cheer. It's great. I really wonder if we'll be able to get that in the App Store. Oh, it's a web app. How great is that? All right. Let's go back to slides. We think with the performance improvements that we just showed you that we can claim that Froyo has the world's fastest mobile browser. And uh, that's a pretty great accomplishment, one we're extremely proud of. OK, we're not done. I showed you what's in Froyo, but make no mistake about our commitment to maintain leadership in the browser uh, on, on Android. One of the ways that we're doing that is we're working with standards bodies to enable de web developers to get capabilities that were formerly only limited to uh, native access to the platform. Uh, what kind of capabilities? Well, think about the things that you can access uh, on a device, things like the magnetometer, the accelerometer. Uh, think about things like the camera uh, or being able to access speech. Wouldn't it be great if you could access this from, uh, from, the, from the browser? We're going to show you a sneak peek at something beyond Froyo, an early development build that will give you a flavor of where we're going next. Let's go back to demos. Now remember, we already got some of this work underway. Last year, we worked with the standards committees to introduce geolocation into the browser. And today, almost on all major modern uh, platforms, why you can make an API call from the browser, get location with the user's permission, and then do a feature like my location right within the browser. But we want to do more. How about the accelerometer? What about the, mag the, the, the uh, access to the tilt and the direction of the device? Watch this. Isn't that great? Right within the browser. All right. Now, another 